untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a black green sacrifice deck featuring the full playset of a Dread Feast Demon as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The 7 mana 6 6 demon from Crimson Vow has flying and says at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice a non demon creature and if you do, create a token that's a copy of a Dread Feast Demon. So ideally, we want to ramp into Dread Feast Demon and have a few creatures in play that we don't mind sacrificing so we can make a copy of the demon right away, so even if the opponent can remove one of them, we'll still be left with a 6-6 flyer that can keep replicating itself. And a great combo with the Dread Feast Demon is Skeletal Swarming. The 5 mine enchantment says at the beginning of your end step, create a tapped 1-1 black skeleton creature token, and if a creature died this turn, create two of those tokens instead. And each skeleton you control has trample, attacks each combo the fable and gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other skeletons you control. So Skeletal Swarming can provide a steady stream of sacrifice fodder to our Dreadfeast Demon, so we can keep making more and more 6-6 flyers. And as long as you have auto-triggered abilities disabled, you can make sure to stack these triggers however you want. Sometimes it's beneficial to first make the Skeletal Swarming token so you can sacrifice it to Dreadfeast Demon. Sometimes if you have another creature in play that you're ready to sacrifice, you want to make sure to sacrifice it to the Demon first, so that you get two Skeletal Swarming tokens instead. So just make sure to have those auto triggered abilities disabled in the settings and then of course skeletal swarming can also be its own win condition if we start generating a few skeletons and we even have a new skeleton in crimson vow thanks to persistent specimen a 1-1 skeleton that for two and a black we can return from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped so it can power up our author skeletons from the skeletal swarming and can also provide a repeatable creature we can sacrifice to our dread feast demon to keep making more 6-6 flyers then taking a look at the rest of our deck, looks like your pretty typical sacrifice deck with that one mana the full playset of Shambling Gas alongside Specimen, that when it dies creates a treasure token or can give a creature minus one minus one until end of turn. So sacrificing a Shambling Gas on turn two to a deadly dispute is one of our better openings as we'll be able to draw two cards and generate an additional treasure token from deadly dispute, potentially allowing us to ramp into a turn three Skeletal Swarming. And then we also have two copies of Hunt for Specimens, generating a 1-1 Pest token that when it dies gains one life. And we also get to learn for one of our seven sideboard lessons, including two copies of Environmental Sciences to find an extra land and gain two life. Necrotic Fumes as removal that requires us to exile a creature. Containment Breach to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Pest Summoning can make two more Pest tokens. Then we've got Introduction to Prophecy for card draw. And Mascot Exhibition can also be a finisher for us, as well as providing ample sacrifice fodder. And then of course, Meat Hook Massacre is an excellent sweeper to have access to in a sacrifice deck, as not only can we potentially wipe the board with this, but then it will stay in place, saying whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life, so this will also act as a win condition, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we also gain one life. Then at 3 mana we've got a bit of ramp with Field Trip, letting us search for a basic forest to put on the battlefield tapped, and we can also learn for a lesson. And then the full playset of Skullport Merchant enters the battlefield generating a treasure token which can help us ramp into our demon. And then the 1-4 has an activated ability for one on the black, letting us sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw a card. So it can also help us sacrifice Persistent Specimen and Shambling Ghast to give us more card advantage. Then at 4 mana we have two copies of Henrika, the 4 mana 1-3 legendary vampire from Crimson Vow has flying and at the beginning of combat on your turn choose one mode that hasn't been chosen between each player sacrifices a creature, great effect to have in a sacrifice deck, we can draw a card at the cost of one life or we can transform Henrika into the infernal seer, a 3-4 flyer with death touch and lifelink and for one and double black each creature we control with flying, death touch and or lifelink gets plus one plus so until until end of turn, so a great combo with our Dreadfeast Demon, can also potentially be relevant with the third chapter of Binding the Old Gods, when it gives all our creatures death touch, we can still pump them up with the Infernal Seer, so there's a lot of hidden synergies here, and just a very powerful individual card as well. And then of course Binding the Old Gods gives us access to a versatile removal spell, destroying target and non-land permanent and opponent controls on the first chapter. On chapter 2 we can search our library for a forest card to put on the battlefield tapped. That also includes our two copies of Woodland Chasm, so we get access to additional black mana. And then on the final chapter our creatures gain death touch until end of turn. Also great synergy with the trampling skeletons from Skeletal Swarming. 
and then we've already covered is the enchantment and our 7 mana demon. Then the mana base includes two copies of Field of Ruin to deal with opposing creature lanes. We've got our own creature lanes with Hive of the Eye Tyrant, turning into a 3-3 menace creature that can exile a card from the opponent's graveyard. Then six basic swamps, four basic forests since we need those to search up with Field Trip as well as Binding. And then as I mentioned, Woodland Chasm can also be searched up with Binding, which is why it's here. And then the dual lands with our Pathway and the new Death Camp Glade. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a cheap creature to sacrifice to Deadly Dispute, but we can still play a field trip, double binding for interaction, so it could be fine. Well, let's see what we're up against. Hopefully not like a blue-red combo deck, because that deck doesn't present many targets for binding, and smashing is a bad sign, although it looks like red-black instead. Alright, so we'll field trip here. And what do I want to learn for? Could still get environmental sciences. But we already have land 5 for swarming. So maybe I want to get pass summoning to sack to deadly dispute. Sure. And then I can go turn 5 swarming, turn after maybe pass summoning plus dispute, which also gives us an extra skeleton. So I'm okay with the scavenger surviving for a turn. And then next turn I can maybe binding plus dispute. So black red vampires it looks like. And Immerstrom Predator is not the easiest creature to deal with. Alright, so can play Binding, maybe I want to attack with a Skeleton first and then sack it to Deadly Disputes. And see what else we draw, Meat Hook Massacre. Now that's a pretty clean answer to Predator, so I can maybe go for it next turn. And then I guess we'll still binding the scavenger for now. Opponent can sack it to the predator. And then next turn we can meet hook massacre for like four or five to wipe the board. And red black's gonna have a hard time dealing with our enchantment, so skeletal swarming's gonna keep on providing value. Alright, step one is probably to attack. And then, let's see here. Yeah, I guess there's no need for me to cast Swarming for more than x equals 5. They can sack the Scavenger first to deny me gaining one life, but that's it. So, Hunt for Specimens can maybe get Mascot Exhibition. And hopefully our Skeletons can start piling up. Opponent does have Hive of the Eye Tyrants as a potential blocker here. Ooh, but Field of Ruin, going to deny that. Skeletons also gain Death Touch, but probably no harm in playing Fields as an option. And then we can attack, see if they want to trade, but I doubt they do. So our opponent takes four. And then I can hunt for specimens. 
feels maybe like we're overextending if I go hunt for a mascot exhibition and play it. Could also get Introduction to Prophecy for card draw, maybe find a Dreadfeast Demon or another Skeletal Swarming. That seems reasonable too. Deadly Dispute would be fine. Henrika also good. But not gonna play it now since we won't be able to use the ability right away. And then I guess I'll pass with Field of Ruin available. Only a single token this turn. But our opponent's still under quite a bit of pressure, so if they have their own sweeper, they might have to pull the trigger. Alright, Cinderclasm to wipe the board, fair enough. So glad we didn't commit anything. And we're still draining the opponent with Meat Hook Massacre, so... Yeah, this card's just completely insane in this deck. Great removal spell, and just happens to also be a win condition. Florian shows up, can use Binding on it. And then... we'll field of Ruin Hive here. Could also instead go for Pest Summoning plus Henrika, make them sacrifice Florian. I do want to make sure that if it doesn't work, if the opponent has removal for Henrika, we can still Binding Florian. But looks like we'll have just enough mana here, so let's try that. Go to combats. But it looks like they have a burn spell here or removal. Alright, so we'll binding using our treasure instead. Which will still give us two skeletons with a swarming. Spider Queen shows up. And a Voldaren Stinger. Spider Queen not the best against trampling skeletons. Ooh, and a Dreadfeast Demon at the right time here. Okay, so we've got a wealth of options. I'm guessing it's fine to send two skeletons at Spider Queen to make sure she dies. And the pest can go face. And then Dreadfeast Demon should close out the game here. Spider Queen still dies. Thanks to Trample. And then I'm probably sacrificing a pest here. Always double check in which order you want to resolve the Dread Feast and Swarming triggers. And not sure how our opponent gets out of this mess. They're looking at the graveyard, maybe in Agadim's Awakening. Yep. X equals 4, so not bad here. But probably not good enough. Creatures also gain Death Touch. I can binding the Nighthawk Scavenger before attacking, but possible they would be dead anyway. And we'll attack. Alright, so... Yeah, Meat Hook Massacre dealt with Predator, and then we never really felt in any danger. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Sadly, no black mana means I'm gonna have to mulligan this. Alright, um... This is not much better. A very slow hand. But I guess we'll try it and bottom a Skeletal Swarming. Hope to find, like, a hunt for specimens, so we can get an environmental sciences early. Up against mono white, shambling gas is decent too. And of course the Meat Hook Massacre are gonna be great in this matchup. Looks like green-white humans instead. 
Field of Ruin, another good draw. Alright, I guess we'll wait. Could have cast Meat Hook for one. I guess it's also reasonable. And then I'll be able to make a treasure with my Shambling Geist. Alright, let's go for it. Possible we could have gotten more value, but don't want my opponent ramping into some big creature that we then can no longer kill. Spellbinder's gonna have a look. All my cards are quite powerful here, so it's unclear what they should take. Takes Binding. And then I guess we can play Skeletal Swarming, so we can sacrifice a token to Henrika next turn. Alright, Brutal Cathar is going to prevent that from happening. In which case, I guess we'll just draw with Henrika. Probably wanted to draw before playing the land in case I draw a tap land. And then next turn we can maybe go for the Sacrifice. I rally the ranks to pump all humans. Means I'll take seven. So, yeah, I guess uh, we could binding the spellbinder, make them sacrifice brutal Cathar, or the other way around, doesn't matter. Don't think I'm too worried about rally the ranks at the moment. And then. Each player sacrifices. So we recovered nicely from our mulligan. Merchant can sacrifice any skeletons that might get chum blocked. Another binding. So that could destroy the Rally the Ranks or the Luminarch. Although I also don't mind just playing Sculptboard Merchants. And then I can sacrifice whichever skeleton gets blocked by the 3-3 token. Which will then also trigger Skeletal Swarming. So I guess we'll deal damage first since they took it. And then sacrifice the Skeleton. And can even play Shambling Geist. And then next turn we'll get Death Touch from Binding the Old Gods, so Henrika can pump the entire team. Another neat combo. Opponent just disturbing their creature here, not too threatening. And I could take four, I could chum block. Doesn't matter. Alright, so we can attack with the team. Uh, let's see, I could also Binding to destroy the Shield Geist, although that's going to cost me quite a bit of mana. I think we're better off Bumping. And there should be more than enough. Alright, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a beautiful hand. Turn 1 Aghasts, turn 2 Dispute, sets up turn 3 Skeletal Swarming. And then we have our Demon ready to go once we have a Skeletal Swarming in play. Up against turn 1 Forests. Blue-green. Get in for one. So not sure yet what our opponent is up to. Might be a ramp deck. Cemetery Prowler, fair enough. It's 
So they will be able to exile my Shambling Ghasts. Now, do have some other options as well, but none are quite as appealing as going for Skeletal Swarming. And then next turn, Henrika can sacrifice the Skeleton Token, forcing the opponent to sacrifice a creature. Or we could maybe set up a Meat Hook Massacre at some point by sacking a Skeleton to Deadly Dispute to give us more mana. But I like where this is going. Opponent's gonna dig up for a basic land. And that's gonna be a Swamp, makes sense. Prowler attacks, and I imagine they'll exile the creature here. Opponent passes. Okay, so yeah, going for Henrika is reasonable, although the opponent is keeping up three mana. So there's a chance it's not gonna work out. But I think it's worth a shot still. The alternative would be attack if opponent blocks deadly dispute. And then can maybe set up a Meat Hook Massacre first. Maybe that's a little safer in the face of three mana here. Alright, fine. Opponent blocks. Another Henrika. I guess we'll play a Shambling Ghasts. And then next turn we'll maybe give Henrika a shot, unless Meat Hook Massacre lines up well. Frog Hemoth, alright. Luckily, no creatures in my graveyard for Frog Hemoth to exile. So it's gonna stay a 4 4, meaning it will die to a Meat Hook Massacre for 4. Uh, I could jump with Shambling Ghasts. Alternatively, could still go for Henrika. Make them sacrifice a creature, and kind of play it slow on the Meat Hook Massacre. So it's a close call here. We do have double Henrika, so even if they deal with the first, it's not a disaster. And if I keep my treasure, it's going to be easier to ramp out Dreadfeast Demon. So, yeah, I guess we'll take seven, and then... I don't mind going with Henrika first. And might want a bit more green mana. So each player sacrifices a creature. And then I could sacrifice Shambling Ghasts, although Shambling Ghasts will be able to block, whereas the Skeletons will not. Although opponent's pretty likely to sacrifice Cemetery Prowler, and then I get a clean attack in. Yeah, I guess we'll sacrifice Shambling Ghasts. Opponent actually gets rid of Frog Hemoth instead, fair enough. Please attack. Opponent can soak up two damage. And next turn we could already play a Dreadfeast Demon. With ample sacrifice fodder in play. Opponent actually took it, surprisingly. Skeletons now 4 power, so they're not messing around. I see Necro Duality. Take 3. And is your opponent just dead on board here? I mean, definitely with Meat Hook Massacre killing my own skeletons. So I don't even have to play Dreadfeast Demon, unfortunately. Henrika can pump herself, and that would be game. Could play Meat Hook Massacre to drain them to death by killing my own skeletons. But I guess we'll go with the onboard lethal. Alright, on to the next one.
All right, unfortunately, I'm unable to connect to any new games and the servers have been down for a couple of hours now, so I wouldn't be able to record any more footage with the deck, which is a shame because I was having a lot of fun playing it. The additions of Dreadfee's Demon and Henrika seem like very good ones. And of course, who doesn't love playing with Skeletal Swarming? Didn't get to see the one mana specimen in action, but in testing it's been quite good for me as repeatable sacrifice fodder, very good alongside the demon, and can potentially even grow our skeletons at instant speed if we get it back from the graveyard. So if you're a fan of these black sacrifice decks, you could definitely give some of these new changes a try. Now I do still have a little bit of content left, I did manage to record one more game, although without commentary, this was a practice game that I usually go through before actually recording any footage. And I did actually make a few mistakes during the gameplay, no huge blunders, but I'm still interested to see if you can spot the mistakes while they happen. And then I'll try to provide a little bit of post-recorded uh, commentary. So we start out with a very solid hand with turn 1 Shambling Ghast, turn 2 Dispute, facing an aggressive green deck with turn 1 Pack Leader. So now we have the option of potentially chumping and then making a treasure to start ramping, or we could even sacrifice a Ghast and kill the Pack Leader instead. Opponent has a turn to Werewolf Pack Leader. So in this spot, I ended up sacrificing Shambling Ghast and then giving the Ascendant Pack Leader minus one, minus one. And then we still generate a treasure, got access to four mana, and currently also didn't have anything expensive really worth ramping into. That required an extra treasure. Did draw the Skeletal Swarming, so had we made a second treasure, we would have been able to cast it turn three. But instead, I decide to run out Binding the Old Gods decent answer to the pack leader, which can potentially trample over a Skullport Merchant if the opponent gets to 4 mana, could die to a Blizzard Brawl as well. So we get the Binding out there, which will eventually ramp us on the second chapter as well. Opponent with a turn 3 Ranger class, not too threatening, and pretty straightforward Skullport Merchant here, which can block the Wolf token, can still survive a Meat Hook Massacre for 2 or 3 on the following turn. So Skullport Merchant ends up being the play. And then on the following turn we could potentially play that Skeletal Swarming. So far so good, no real blunders I would say, even though you could make some different decisions. Opponent has another Ranger class. Attacks for two, we block. Opponent could have a post-combat fight spell, but so be it. And there's a Blizzard Brawl. Once again, not necessarily a mistake. And then now we face a decision, do we want to already wipe the board, do we want to add Skeletal Swarming, decide to go with Skeletal Swarming, and also play out Shambling Ghast, I believe. Again, the Shambling Ghast we could also keep in hand since we expect to play Meat Hook Massacre, but we do have a Deadly Dispute in hand, which can always sacrifice a Shambling Ghast for a bit of value. And the more we add to the board, the more the opponent is also incentivized to overextend into it. And they actually played the new Olvenwald Oddity on 4 here, Trample Haste. So here I'm deciding how do I want to sequence my next turn, and does Shambling Ghast want a Chum Block to prevent 2 damage, or do we want to hang on to it to maybe sacrifice to a Deadly Dispute? Do decide to Chump to save myself 2 damage since I'm planning to cast a Meat Hook Massacre, and then Deadly Dispute can still sacrifice the Skeleton Token. Now I attack for 1 damage first, because the Skeleton's gonna die anyway. And then cast the Deadly Dispute, sacking the Skeleton, see what else we draw. And then we can cast the Meat Hook Massacre. Seems pretty straightforward, end of turn we're gonna get two Skeleton Tokens. Just have to sacrifice one treasure to be able to cast Meat Hook Massacre for four. Now, did you spot the mistake? Again, it's a pretty subtle one, but if we rewind here... Instead of sacrificing our creature to Deadly Dispute and then playing the Meat Hook Massacre, what I should have done is cast Meat Hook Massacre, and then with the trigger on the stack, I could still cast Deadly Dispute. That way we have the Meat Hook Massacre enchantment in play, and by sacrificing my creature afterwards, I would get to drain the opponent for one, and the end result would be the same, except we would have our opponent at one fewer life point. So that's mistake number one, a subtle mistake, but... Uh, yeah, correct play is still important, and that's where we gain small edges. So, it's back to the opponent, they play another Ulvenwald Oddity. 
we're down to 13 and top decked another Skeletal Swarming, but we do have the mana to cast the Dratvi's Demon. So, tough choice here. Both are great options. Could even play the Skullport Merchant first and then still play another card. Decide to attack for 4 and cast Dratvi's Demon, saving myself the treasures. And then it happened pretty quickly, but uh, mistake number 2 just happened. And it's something I talked about in the introduction, actually. Stacking your triggers with Skeletal Swarming and Dreadfee's Demon. So in this case, since no creature died in our turn, we wanted to make sure to sacrifice to Dreadfee's Demon first, and then resolve the Skeletal Swarming trigger, which would have resulted in two skeletons instead of one. So, missed out on one skeleton, basically. And I did catch the mistake during gameplay, since I clicked through it a little bit too quickly. But that's often when mistakes happen, is when you're super far ahead in the game, you think nothing can go wrong, so you tend to play a little bit faster and looser, and that's when mistakes can sneak in. But uh, of course you want to make sure to always play to the best of your abilities, and not give the opponent any chance to come back into the game. Now we ended up playing the second Skeletal Swarming, pumping our existing Skeletons, and then Hive of the Eye Tyrants gets in there as well and can close out the game. So even though none of the mistakes really ended up costing me, just wanted to go through this footage and point them out for you. And yeah, hopefully you still enjoyed this additional piece of content, as I was unable to record any additional footage with the deck. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.